Welcome to another episode of uh, Real People, Real Stories. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the shows that we've been having. If you haven't, go back, follow the stories, watch them, get entertained, get informed, learn a thing or two. And we are back with a new guest. So uh, let our guest invite, introduce herself to us. So just tell us your name and uh, maybe what you do. Good point. Hi, so my name is Debra Iminsa. I am born again. I gave my life to Christ almost in 2013. And it's been an amazing, amazing journey. I work for a humanitarian uh, organization. I work for International Committee of the Red Cross. I've been with them for almost 24 years. It's been a an experience, it's been a journey, uh, but here I am. Yes, it's uh, it's been a, I mean, I'm looking forward to just talking to you and sharing my stories and then, yeah, let's see where this conversation takes us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're excited to have you and uh, just learn about your journey. And maybe we can start by uh, what's your earliest memory growing up as a child? What is the first the thing you remember when you think back? Okay, so let me start with my childhood. First of all, I'm a village girl, uh, a surprise to many people. I was born in Nairobi, but then um, uh, my mom uh, sent me to the village to stay with my mom, with her mother, uh, my grandmother, because um, I guess life was a bit hard and she was not getting maids and, and, and all that and she needed to work as well. So I think a discussion came up and so I lived with my grandmother from a time I was probably months to when I was nine years old. So I grew up in the village. I grew up in a village in Pihiga County. It's called Mbali. And uh, that's where I started my early childhood. I went to nursery school in Bale, uh, in nursery school. Then I went to Bale primary school until standard three. And then my grandmother passed away. She went to be with the Lord at that time. And, uh, and that's when I came to Nairobi. So I still consider myself as a village girl because between zero to nine, really, those are the ages you are being molded into who you are. So yeah, I was in the village until nine years old. And then I came to Nairobi and- um, Are you the firstborn, the second born? Yes, your siblings? Um, so yes, um, I am a firstborn out of four siblings. Uh, both my parents are alive and very strong. Um, I'm a mother of one beautiful daughter called Aretha. And I am the firstborn, my second sister, Violet, and my third sister, Dinah, have gone to be with the Lord. And I have a younger brother called Ford. And uh, yeah, that's my family. Okay. As so a... for the nine years when you're in the village with yeah. your grandma, how was that experience? <laughs> that experience, uh, from what I can remember, I think, first of all, I was very spoiled because I was always with my grandma. And I know I lived with cousins, uh, that's my brother, my mom's brothers, their wives and children. So those are my cousins. And I know I always got favor <laughs> of my grandmother. And so I lived this beautiful life, free life, um, always went everywhere with her. And I remember also she would go for these church meetings and I think functions and she would be given food and she always brought me a piece of chicken in a paper bag and uh, and <laughs> it's a habit I think I've now picked up. I think I, 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 I spoiled my daughter that way, but that's another story. And so, yeah, for me, I felt I was really spoiled. I was really loved. I was really, it was fun. It was really fun. And, uh, but um, I must tell you that, um, and it was all very, very rosy until my grandmother died. So my grandmother died, but be, the few months before, I guess the family arranged for me to come to Nairobi, it's like we went into poverty that I could not even understand. 
I remember um, there was a time even we would, I don't know if you know, so when you are, uh, when beans are sprouting, uh, when they're just like two, three uh, leaves, we would actually pick that and boil with salt and eat with ugali. For us, and from what I understood later, that was the height of poverty, because now you're even eating that with salt only, nothing else. And then uh, it even reduced further to even just taking porridge, uh, brown porridge. That's what I remember. Do you know what caused the change? I don't know. That's what I wondered. Because for me, I felt like maybe my grandmother was really holding the fort. And when she went, it's like everything dropped. And, uh, and, and life drastically changed for me in those few months before I came to Nairobi, before I was brought to Nairobi. Had you joined school? In the village, mm. yes, I was in school uh, even when from nursery up to standard three. That's when Do you I remember came. the name of the school you went to. Mbale Primary School, <laughs> Mbale Primary School, and it's still there. <laughs> it looks a bit different now, but it's still there. Um, in fact, one of my bucket lists is to go back there and give back because I still remember even my class. And by the way, um, my first standard one. And I think standard two, I learned under three. It was not a class. We were under three and we used to go to school half day. And I remember we used to write with some white stones on the, on the ground. I went to a real class, I think standard three. And that's about the same time also I left, yeah. At this time, are you communicating with your parents in Nairobi? Um, not really, because again, the kind of communication then, no. I just knew they were in Nairobi. And uh, they were going to come for me. That's all I knew. But there was no real communication. No. Did you have questions on why you were sent there? Or? Um, it was, uh, like I said, uh, mom said that uh, she was really struggling uh, getting a maid and everything. So she was a single mom. So she, at the time, she, she was struggling uh, balancing maid. She told me at one time she even went to work with me until it was too much. That's why they decided that uh, she she should... Uh, <laughs> send, you, send you to yeah, Higa. Yeah. So when you come back to Nairobi, uh -huh. where do you live? Which sides of Nairobi are you? So when I came to Nairobi, I lived with my mom and dad like for a few months again, um, probably three, four months then, and I was not in school. They were still trying to look for a school for me. Then I was moved to... Um, my auntie's place, that's my mom's sister, and totally different ball game. So from a village girl, I went to this life of very high class. My auntie and uncle um, both have now gone to be with the Lord, but they were such wonderful people. And I grew with them from that time of 10 years now, because that was 1980, to until I started working. So I grew up with them. They were this really posh family. Um, my uncle was a director of a uh, uh, national park. Uh, my auntie was working for the UN. This is the first time I got to handle a fork and a knife, and we used to have like proper dinners and uh, and and <laughs> and I remember even the food, the kind of food we ate was so it was served in a very different way, and um, I think that's when I learned to be like, uh, how do I say, I started to have very serious OCD. I started being like that because my auntie was so meticulous. She was, things had to be in order. Food had to be served at a certain time. We, when we came from school, we first have tea and a saucer and a cookie. Then dinner, you go do your homework, shower, and then come back for dinner. The table is set. The food comes and we serve, you know, and she serves us and we eat with a fork and a knife and then we'd have a dessert. And then, uh, you know, that kind of, I remember from the village eh, where I was eating, <laughs> bean beans, beans with salt. Beans, yeah. <laughs> now I'm in this thing <laughs> that has totally changed me. And it was quite a challenge for me at the beginning. And my cousin took time to adjust to me because they were like, now who's this who has come? So, but later I got used to it. I hit the ground running and I didn't want to be left. Oh, and also I couldn't speak English. 
they were speaking English, they were in the international schools, <laughs> but I was learning like as fast as I could. So before time, even me, I was wearing, I was like, yeah, I'm wearing him. But uh, fortunately, fortunately for me, I was in a normal city council school. So there was that clash. <laughs> so I went to St. Peter Clever's primary school when I came. And that's where I joined in standard uh, three, but rewinded again because of language barrier adjusting to this life of Nairobi. So I repeated standard four and that's how standard eight caught up with me. Cause if I didn't repeat, then that would not have caught up with me. So then there was that. So when I come home from my St. Peter Clevers and they come from the international school, they were in Banda, <laughs> Banda school. And then, um, but, um, Anyway, I... How was the culture shock in uh, dealing with that and dealing with that at a very young age? Yeah. And also dealing with the fact that now your mom also had given you out to your... To my auntie, uh, how yeah. How was that for you? At the time, I was asking a lot of questions and I was feeling... I won't lie. There was a time I would feel really low, like... Like you feel you're not part of. But then... um I think what kept me going, one of my cousins was really young, almost a year old. I think she became my friend because she's the only one who didn't treat me differently at the time. And so I adjusted, I became her friend. So she kept me going. And my auntie and uncle also were quite, um, the, the, they were not, uh, um, how do I say, a lack of uh, one. They, they, they treated me okay. But I had to struggle to keep up. I had to struggle to understand what they're saying. I would be listening to what they're saying. I would try to imitate how they're talking. I would read the books they were reading so I can catch up. So it was challenging, but I think I fought it well. It was a struggle, but I will not wish it on anyone. But I think I managed it. And I was keen and I wanted to be part of, so I really struggled. But it was funny that... Um, when we do certain things as a family at home, they were, were quite impressive. But when I went to tell my my classmates in school, they'd be like, mm, won't go. Because that, <laughs> that was not, uh, it, it's like I was living two different worlds. When I'm in school, I'm this local girl. But when I come home, I'm in this high-end uh, life. So yeah, it really had an impact on me. And yeah. uh, your relationship with your mom? My relationship with my mom at the time may maybe have been a bit distant, but I didn't. I don't think it was on purpose. I think it was distance because now I'm heading into my teens and I've never really lived with her. So first half ten years I'm with my grandmother, then the next ten I'm with my auntie, but we kept in touch all the time. Remember in Nairobi now we meet as a family. Uh, the two families would have lunches together once in a while. But I think my relationship with my mom became stronger after now I left my auntie's place and I started working and I even started living with them now, both mom and dad and my other siblings. And that's when for me, the family relationship with both mom, dad and my two sisters then and my brother, but he was really young, started. So when you moved to your mom's sister, then the, your siblings were not yet born or they were living they were they were born but they were living with them uh there's only my follow my sister who follows me my late sister follows me the difference was two years then my other sister was six years and then my brother was nine years so there was a gap but they were living with my with my with my parents both parents and yeah. you were the only one who now yes i'm the only one who is living this. yes <laughs> how is that in your relationship with them with your siblings because they maybe they see you now yeah. in a better situation or uh, you're living in a better place than them i don't think we we even thought about that and i don't think i even ever discussed that with them um how we felt it's just that every time we met we were excited to to see each other but I don't, even in later in life, I don't think we ever discussed um, what impact or how did it affect our relationship that we lived. No, I don't think it came. And when, when I came back, it's like we were at a point where we all needed each other. 
uh, actually me and my late sister Violet became actually very close because now we were almost the same uh, two years apart. We, were, we had a lot to share. We are sharing a room now. Uh, my other sister had her own room and my brother was still, you know, in my parents' room. So we were closer now. We started uh, going out together. We started inviting our different friends home. So we really started getting closer. Which side of Nairobi was this? Which? Ah, I, uh, so, okay, with my auntie, we were living uh, in Banda, Banda, near Banda School. But with my parents now, we are living in, we're in Golden Gate. And we were there for, yeah, until um, they moved out again and they went to live in Bomas, Bomas of Kenya. But that has been home all through now, yeah, until 